Well, hello everyone. K Kim here, and thank you for tuning in. Um, again, my name is K Kim from the Traders Club, and uh, welcome to the uh, midweek update. Um, I had a kind of a full schedule today, so I had to cancel the live event, but that I did promise that I was going to put out a uh, midweek update video, static video, recorded video, as you're watching right now. So let's go through these indices, um, and uh, you know. I did a long-term analysis, the more of a broad, broad term, a broad view analysis last week. It says special midweek update video. So if you missed that, um, go ahead and watch that. Again, it says special midweek update that I looked at the big, big scheme of things. So I'm not gonna do that today. I'm just gonna look at a very, very like a minor term, shorter term, micro term. And then we're gonna try to analyze, you know, what could happen tomorrow, what could happen early next week. Okay, so I'm not gonna go into a big picture, primary term type of thing. Let's look at minor term. Obviously, we, you know, looking at Dow Jones Industrial Average, we're actually looking at index today here, and this is a daily chart, and you can see that we had a very, very abrupt sell-off. I mean, this thing just came down very, very fast in about three days, and this is something that we have never seen. Ha seen happening this thing coming down this fast uh, you know a lot of times something that I, I talk a lot about is when we see a market comes down very abruptly like that it's a lot of times it's not that stable because we've seen these kind of declines before and, and something that I talked about before is that what I would fear if you want to fear this market is a cultivation a cultivation is a primary term topping pattern and obviously that could happen that can still be happening if this thing start to you know continue higher to the upside and then we kind of stop short somewhere about here that will be about 50 percent retracement zone let me just put out that fibonacci real quick right okay so, so i think because of this wick this long wick i think it's kind of i i think i want to put it right about here where it actually uh, by the closing price if you go to line chart probably that's how it's going to end up because that 50 percent lines up with these pivots as well so that's kind of how i like to put it and you know we pull back pretty near pretty close that you know this is actually 61.8 percent retracement here from the up top uh 61 point here you know what let me make it right i'll make it right for you guys there you go just for the same there right now we got it right so this is a fibonacci retracement again it's a fibonacci retracement so you can see we came down here we got back up and again this is a 50 percent retracement um you know uh, that's the level that you're gonna watch if we get up there and then actually we did pull back um late last week actually today's <laughs> oh my god today's wednesday it's funny how when you run your own businesses you just have a hard time, uh, you know, recognizing if it's Wednesday or if it's Monday. Um, I don't know if it's a good thing. It, it's, it's a good thing, or sometimes it can be a bad thing. But anyway, so actually, a lot on Monday and Tuesday, I thought today was a Monday for some weird reason. Obviously, I don't do these videos on Monday. So anyway, so Monday, Tuesday, we pull back right on that 61 point percent retracement zone and for bears that was a good news because what the bears want to see is a continuation of cultivation you know of the lower highs and so when we start to see that pullback right on that 61.8 percent retracement after this kind of decline that's exactly what the bears wants to see and the bears wants to see continue lower does continue creating this lower lower and lower high right and obviously this market will never you know make it so easy so you know we did see some bounce today so obviously just one day bounce we can't say too much about that at this point so and, and that's actually 10 EMA. you can see that you know that that blue moving average you're seeing on this chart here right this right here coming down that's the 10 year a lot of times when you see a steep decline like this the first thing is going to test is a 10 EMA. 10 EMA is going to act as resistance and these are the levels that you're going to see that doesn't mean that these moving average is going to be absolute and become a absolute resistance does not mean that at all those are the levels that it needs to conquer if you're a buyer here if you're bulls here if you're a bull here then what you want to see is first things first claim that 10 EMA, and then you want to see this in getting above that 
that you know 61.8 percent retracement and then we got 20 ma waiting there we got 50 percent retracement which is important but i think as far as an important pivot is concerned for both bears and bulls for both sellers and buyers i think it's going to be that 50 percent. i think it's going to be that 1700 level right about here because i think if we get above that level i think the seller i think the bear should be very very nervous that this thing could have another run towards the end of the year however if we get up here and if we start falling over I think the bull should be uh, somewhat anxious at this point because there's a lot of things can happen. I wouldn't like freak out at that point if you're a buyer here because what can happen is it, it, it can get up and then it can pull back and then we can, we, you know what I mean, we can do stuff, something like this. And it's not a, it's not something that, you know, it's not new. Something like that could happen. A lot of times, you know, it comes to that pivot area and we get up. You know, you can see that. You can even see that right here. We, we pull back a little bit within that, within that decline. You know what I mean? That 20, 50 MA was tested. And then what happened? We, we got to that, got to the major pivot level. And then we saw pretty steep pullback. And then we broke through. And this is where I'll say, this is where bears, sellers be very, very afraid. And obviously after there with a huge move there so just use it I'm just using that as a example and doesn't mean that that's exactly what's gonna happen so looking at a much bigger scale scheme of things here so above above 50% retracement 1700 level no 17,000 I'm sorry about that 17,000 level I usually use diamond for uh, um, uh, what is that the uh, analysis there but you know with the with the dire situation that we're dealing with uh you know last couple weeks I, I wanted to look at index itself i mean it's not a too, it's not a huge big deal looking at you know the diamond or the dow jones it's just maybe it's just a little bit more accurate to look at index itself though they're they're pretty much identical let me just go to diamond here they're they're pretty much identical yeah, I mean, they, they look, the candles look a little bit different, but they're pretty much identical. But obviously, again, we're still dealing with a dire situation. So let's go to, actually, let's look at index here. So 50% is the important level here. We get above this level and start, you know, reclaiming that 50 MA. If we start hanging around like this and we start doing stuff like this, buyers or bears be very, very afraid. But if we if this thing start getting up here and start reject if we get rejected at this level and that's exactly what the bears want to see a lot of times what's going to happen is that it could come down and, and hit that 50 ma that pink dotted uh, moving average is a 50 exponential moving average right 50 day exponential moving average what, what could happen is it hit that 50 ma and this thing can tank right and i think a lot of times though what could happen is we could form either double bottom so i don't think at that point you know not necessarily start calling major you know market crash or anything like that i think if we start and then if we get lower than fifteen thousand on dow jones i think this is where the buyers be very very afraid we may see very very steep decline in the over market even have a market crash and that could result in mar you know, uh, you know, the market recession and all that. I, I, I don't know if we're gonna have like, you know, some craze what people are saying, you know, like a global market meltdown, all of that. I think, you know, if anything, we could, there's still a lot of support levels though. You know what I mean? There's still some of these levels could still come down. And you know what though, to be honest with you guys, if this thing could all the way come down to 14,000, we're actually still in an uptrend. If this thing bounced from this level, that could still be a primary term uptrend. You know what I'm talking about? So, but you know what? Let's worry about that later if that actually happens. So let's talk about the tangible data here. So with the today's bullish move that we're seeing right here, so we are pulling back a little bit and we see a little bit of bullish signal there. I mean, you could say that micro term, you know, it does have a little bit of bullish sentiment there, but because we're dealing with such a volatile market, it's really at this point is a 50-50. Tomorrow we could just have a huge gap down and then have a sell off, or we could have just another big gap up and then go. I mean, it, it, anything can go. But obviously, as far as the sentiment is concerned, we're in the bearish sentiment. There's a lot of fear in the market. There is a lot of fear in the market. A lot of investors and traders are very anxious and nervous, right? This is a lot of headlines you're gonna hear on YouTube's and and in, in different media's. You're gonna you're gonna hear people talking about crash market meltdown. This is where a lot a lot of people gonna come out and and start to predict certain things because they're gonna become a star 
if they call this right, they're gonna become a star. They're gonna get a lot of huge publicity, and so a lot of people are looking for their fame. So don't get sucked into that kind of shenanigan. You know what I'm saying? Let the market tell you where it's going. Like, like I like I addressed, like articulated before that we are in a dire situation. I get that, but we still don't have proper signals, and, and they can conclude that we're gonna have a market crash because we. Again, go back to the video that I've done last week. I looked at things much, much bigger scheme of things, and, and I looked at very in-depth. I, I spent one hour on the indices alone, so please go look at it. I don't have time for that right now, right? So um, obviously, we're downtrend in a minor term. We're, we're, you know, we would have to say bearish in an intermediate term as well, in a primary term. Uh, in a primary term of things, obviously, I addressed that you know uh, last week. There's so way to look at this. So, um, if we continue to have a bullish move to the upside here this coming week or so, and it start kind of reclaiming 10 EMA, then it's safe to say that we're probably getting back up here to kind of hit that level of 50 at uh, 50 percent retracement and possibly get that 20 EMA. See how he's going to deal with that. So, we'll have to watch that. Let's go to uh, SP 500 here index s p 500 index did a pretty similar thing here uh let me actually throw a fibonacci and see if we i'll make it right as well this time so s p 500 is a little bit different story than uh dow jones industrial average because this thing actually came pretty close 50 percent retracement and this is a this is a good uh good level for 50 percent to be around because that's a level that has been acting as support in the past so when you use these fibonacci levels you want to make sure it is it is lining up coinciding with the previous or prior major pivot if that happens that 50 percent carries more strength it's more authentic it, it, you know what i'm saying it's it it it, it deserves a little bit more attention, right? So obviously, this is a level that I was looking at on the S&P 500 here. This is a level uh, that I thought it could come back up and then hit it and, and act as uh, uh, resistance because it has been acting as strong support there. And that's exactly what it did, which is also coinciding with that 50%. And we pulled back it pull back so here it's the same thing here if we get above this level here and that's the same level as a 10 you can see it's the same as dow jones it's that 10 is again after this kind of decline the first thing is going to retest the 10 a lot of times they're not going to be able to just go straight up from that a lot of times what it does is we get a pullback again there's a lot of fear from this move so when it gets to this pivot level is you know people call it uh what overhead supply because this has been acting as a support level there so people you know who bought it at this level you know you could say in theory that they're starting to get out at this level so i'm just gonna you know i'm just gonna do uh, i'm gonna break even or something like that right so they you know and then we pull back here and then you can see with the two days candle uh that potentially it might want to retest the 10 ma again and if we can reclaim the 10 ma possibly we might retest that 50 ma and we're probably gonna find some resistance at this at that level and but then again if we get above that 50 percent level i think the next resistance on s p 500 will be 20 uh 2000 level right this is where the 50 ma is residing above 2000 level sellers be very very afraid sellers be afraid above 2000 level that's the level that buyers can really really take this thing down or take this thing up to the next level spires below 18, 1800 level be very very afraid anywhere above this level give it some time what it could do is it could it could do it could hang around here for a while gather its momentum and bang get up and that's exactly what we did in 19 or uh, 2019 2011 uh, uh you know summer or fall time here that's exactly what we did you can see they would abrupt sell at one two three four this actually took four days and then what happened right Again, this is shenan This is what I call shenanigan, right? It's a major, major bear trap there. And what happened is we just hung out here for a little bit, right? We hung out here for a while and gathered momentum, right? And then we broke out, came down. Again, if I put a Fibonacci here, this is what I'll say. Above this pivot, buyers or sellers be very, very afraid, right? And exactly, that's exactly what happened. We pulled back. However, that level still act as support, and then that's a level this market saw another several years of bullish run. And same thing can happen here, right? 
but it's going to happen on the S&P 500 above 2,000 level. This is where for the bears, 2000, actually 2,000 level here is where bear, sellers are going to get nervous. Above 2,000, right at 2,000, sellers are going to get nervous. Above 2,050 or so, 2,040, sellers are going to be very, very afraid and they're going to start running. And this is where you're going to attract a lot of buyers. This is what I would call public participation phase. Public participation phase. If this thing starts hanging around here, that's what I call accumulation phase. And then if you decide, it starts to make its move way up. Because, I mean, it could, it could accumulate and then it can fall as well. So we need to see where it's going to make its move. Obviously, as of today, I cannot... Oh. Okay, so I cannot tell you what's gonna happen, but again, with this move, maybe we're trying to get back up to that, you know, 50 MA level, or we're trying to get back up to 10 MA level, so we'll see. So some of those levels to watch on S&P 500 index itself, 2,000 level, above 2,000 level, sellers gonna going to get a nervous, buyers gonna get a little bit more confidence. Above 2,050 level, sellers be very very aware be very very afraid anywhere below 1800 1870 ish as uh, you know buyers be aware but buyers be aware of a fake out be aware of a shenanigan a massive bear trap before this thing takes off right so we gotta watch that but so let's see let's, let's see what happens in the next few days here obviously minor term bears intermediate term i'll say bearish primary term we're still in a bullish territory major major primary term right so uh, let's look at Nasdaq and Russell, and we'll be done with the uh, indices there. Uh, let me actually put out or put up Fibonacci here as well and see where we're at. I'm going to actually use... It's actually funny to say that if I shoot a line chart, it might be a little bit more accurate because we saw so much volatility that it might be more accurate to go line chart. Yes, you know why though? Because this is important pivot right here, right? And that lines up with 50%. That has been the theme of the this whole video, right? This whole webinar video that we're doing, right? It's the 50%. So since I did a line chart, what happened? That 50% lining up with what? With this level. That's important pivot. Important pivot. It acted as a resistance before. It acted as support before. Now it is acting as resistance again. And then we pull back. And then we're getting back up again. So again, so... Uh, Again, on the NASDAQ, though, it looks much, much stronger than Dow Jones and S&P 500. And I'm not surprised. Again, go watch that last week's midweek update video, special midweek update video. I talked about why I spent one hour. I know I keep saying that. I'm like, why do you keep saying that? I keep saying that because it's important, right? So, buyers, I would say to be safe, 4,900 level right here. 4,000, close to 5,000, 4,900, like close to 5,000 air, buyers be very, very, or sellers be very, very afraid here. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting to note that, I mean, you know, we are, we're like, we got close to 50% retracement, which means in about a week or so, this whole decline, we already, you know, that recover about 50%. So it looks like with the way it closed today, I mean, looks like you look at this candle right here, uh, you know, it's close strong again. That doesn't mean it's guaranteed it's going to continue higher, but it looks like we may uh, retest this level again here. And again, there's a we're dealing with the gap here. So every time when you're dealing with gap, things can get a little hectic. It can it can do a lot of shenanigan there. So keep that in mind there. So if we get back up, what you want to see is this thing getting. If you're a buyer, if you're a bull here, you want this thing to reclaim 20 MA and staying above 4,887 level, right? If we can do that, that would give a lot of confidence uh, to the buyers. And once we get about 5,018. That's where you're gonna see a lot of lot of buyers coming in. Public participation is gonna set in here. Again, we we're not sure if we're in accumulation phase. We're not sure if if we're going to get up and then roll over again and throw maybe some kind of a double top and then we start just rolling up. That could also happen. For that, in that case, anywhere below four four thousand five hundred in this vicinity is where the buyer is gonna be aware. But it, I still, I still think that. Just with this amount of decline, again, 
it doesn't have a care looking at the nasdaq actually spider and dow jones s p 500 dow jones does have a characteristic of potential major topping pattern but when i look at nasdaq though it just the way it turned it, it to me it just seems like we're still in an uptrend and it's just a sharp pullback with an uptrend i mean yeah the scale was much bigger but the sentiment is pretty similar to what we've seen before it's not something this is something new we see this the, you know what I'm saying? See these things kind of happen because you could say a little correction, you know. But what it what does market do? Market uh, market always a shrug that off and continued higher. And not to mention we're right on the uptrend support as well on the Nasdaq. So at this point, I, I cannot call you know the bubble is gonna burst and this thing is gonna go to 500. You know it's crazy when people say shenanigan like that all the time because those people are calling it they've been calling that since here 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 and here that it's gonna do nothing it's gonna do that it's gonna do this it's gonna do this it's gonna do this it's gonna do this and it's gonna do this there's always people saying shenanigans so uh but i i just looking at the nasdaq here to me it, it just looks more like we're gonna see you know what i'm saying it does look more to me like it just was a abrupt sell, a lot of panic, a lot of fear happening in the market because there's so many words like extended. It's it's we're in a bubble. This bubble is gonna burst. This whole like you know you know uh, consumers or these you know retail people are just they're just just very very anxious, right? Nervous, very very anxious about the market. What this market is gonna do? We're gonna have a huge crash and all of that. But again. Not to mention that this market loves that kind of headline, loves that kind of fear because it loves to move without most of people. That's what this market is designed to do. If you haven't figured out why, again, if you're wondering why you're not making money, why a market seems to always do something opposite of what you're trying to do, if you keep running into things like it does everything opposite of what I think it should do, it completely does, I, I and I cannot, you know what I mean, get a, get a, get a, a you know, Gas grasp of what it really want to do. It just seems to always do completely random, right? If you're in that position, keep in mind that most people feel that way. That's what this profession is so much more difficult than being a doctor, right? Again, no disrespect to doctors. I, I'm not a doctor, so I'm sorry if I disrespected any doctors. You guys are doing a wonderful job saving lives. But sake of the argument, the difference is, is this, is that it's unpredictable. There is no protocol. There is no training that is going to prepare you because this market evolve. Human anatomy and anatomy is just, it's pretty similar. I mean, yeah, we have a little bit different, you know, situations, but our, just the way we were created right in our in our in our in our body we're all pretty similar so you understand certain surgery you can operate if you're you know you master certain you you're a, if you're a master surgeon then you can't have to operate on anybody else because our our you know our, our body is is it's you know built in a similar way very, very similar right? well market is not like that you know every you know uh market seems to evolve and it it, it does completely unthinkables and, and it, you know what I'm saying it, there's no guarantees of you know what should happen what could happen it just and but it's not random though it is very random if you look at things you know short term if you look at a if you understand historical view which again I looked at last week you know history does repeat but it's not guaranteed that this time it's going to continue repeating maybe this is a time that po potentially that history can break and that 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 trend or that you know uh, repetition can be no longer but it's a lot of times also it's a fear right it's a fear that um you know we always feel like all of our all of us always feel that we're gonna get the worst right haven't you feel that way Right, like you always say, of course, I always get the worst end of the stick or something like that, right? We always feel that, you know, every time we try to do something, always something goes bad. That's not always true. I think psychologically, why you feel that way is when things do go right, you tend to not remember it. You know, that's actually psychology behind it. When things do go right, we tend to not remember it as much as when things do go wrong. So then when things do go wrong all the time, you remember it. So then it feels like every time you do something, it goes wrong. Like you have a worst luck ever, right? It's all psychological. It's all mental thing. 
But anyway, again, I want to go back. I'm not disrespecting any doctors out there. I never wanted to be a doctor because I was really bad in school, <laughs> and so I, I, uh, I just, I'm just not a book smart. Uh, I know people say like book smart, street smart. I mean, I'm sure some of you think that it's stupid, but if, if you want a category like that, I'm, I'm more of a street smart, and I just, I kind of learn as I see things um, rather than um, you know reading books and stuff. I, I do love reading books um, and learning things, uh, but I don't like learning things that are not useful. I guess in my life. But that's another time to discuss or talk about there. But let's continue here. I don't want to uh, kind of sidetrack here. Let's go to Russell here. Obviously, Russell also um, Russell is not actually acting acting very. Well. Russell actually haven't recovered any not much. You know, compared to Nasdaq and other indices, there they at least hit the fifty percent mark. Well, Russell really haven't done that. Russell really gone, haven't even gone to. Again, let me do this right didn't even come to um, 61 8.8 percent .8 level right it just it just kind of came but again that 10 EMA the 10 year acting as support there today it looks like uh, you know we, we, we trying to get back up here so what you want to see on the Russell if you're a buyer here you really obviously it's first things first you want to get above that and I think the 50 percent is I see I see why that level act is resistant that right there that's a pivot that's a strong pivot so it's not surprising that we've pull back because that's a pivot right there you can see that there's a lot of buyers at that level acting as resistance there so i mean you know we could hang out here for a while and then get up or it could pull back i think anywhere be below 1100 uh again this is a level that uh, buyers gonna be very be you know start to uh be very very nervous here uh but as far as russell is concerned it's it's interesting to note that we had a major topping pattern here that never played out and if, and for me to think that we're gonna form another major topping pattern anything can happen in a market that's the thing about the market is anything can happen but as far as a probability is concerned I think it's pretty rare that we're gonna throw what because we had a major topping pattern this was a massive massive bear trap this is why this was why I was very very bullish on Russell early 2015 late 2014 because we have nullified this major topic that we're gonna just take off well that didn't play out that way at least that's what it looks like so far though if this thing can continue because obviously that's still considered as a primary term higher low on the Russell if you know what I mean right this is low higher low this is low this is higher low this is low that's still higher low is it not yes it is again talking about major primary term which means that can still be part of major primary term uptrend as you can see right here okay so as far as a probability is concerned though anything can happen and will happen in the market um i think it'd be very rare for me to say we had a major topping pattern here and then we kind of nullified it and then we're going to come down here and start forming another major topping pattern it's very hard for me to see that though it could happen like i keep saying that, that it could happen because anything goes i understand that but to me i feel like when we just look at Russell here, I feel like this thing just shaking everybody off and just make sure there's 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 condemning the whole market and just imputing fear before just getting some crazy bullish move like this. You know, it happened before here, like 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 this, like you know, we 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 come back and then we get up and then like we come back down again and then you know it comes all the way down to like what like all the way back down here. And this is what I would say. We had that correction here, and then having another correction, though it could, because it had a low equal lows, it could have to do something like this. And then we could have a right shoulder and then roll over. Correct? Yes, it could. And again, if this was bad, if this was to, let's say to this 2012 November, then I'd be like, okay, let's say this is today, and this is where market close. We got equal lows here. And I'll say this, huh? It's interesting because what is this, this we had that correctional correctional that's the you know correctional uh topping pattern right and then we we confirmed it by closing below that neckline there and then we nullified it by that weak or that we invert head and shoulder and then we throw another uh kind of a more smaller term you know kind of a intermediate term correctional pattern and then we came down here we threw another invert head and shoulder and we got back up as far as 
probability is concerned, though anything can happen, I would have to say it would be very rare that we're going to throw another topping pattern in this thing. So we got that, and then right on the resistance. And this is very debatable. There are different technical analysts say that the more time hit this resistance, the the you know the stronger it's gonna become, and, and the more time we throw a topping pattern here, this can go to nothing. Then there's others like me. I say the more time you trying to hit that resistance, the more the higher probability is gonna break through. The reason I have that I came to that conclusion, I studied and researched history going all the way back. Right? I mean, I'm talking about intensive, extensive scrutiny and research to ascertain, to find probabilities. What does it happen if this happens? What does it do if it, that happens? Right? So in my research, when we keep throwing up these kind of topping pattern after that has already been nullified, right at the resistance level, it has a lower probability that it's going to play out. It has higher probability that this thing actually is gathering its momentum. Because what? We're creating higher lows, guys. That low is higher than this low. Let's go back today. This low is higher than that low. See, I'm not just telling you, well, this is what I think. This is what's going to happen because I said so. I'm not telling you this. If you if you look at all my videos, if you look at all my updates, you understand that I always give you examples that what could possibly happen. I always give you probability because nobody truly knows where the market is going. All you and I have is probability, right? So I'm still slightly biased and I'm still a bull in this market. And you're probably not going to find a lot of that um, listening to news and uh, market meltdown, global market market melt, global market meltdown theorists. So, um, but obviously, looking at the minor to intermediate, term, we are bearish there. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. As far as that uh, Russell is concerned, you want to see where the deadly level is for the sellers, where the sellers should be very, very afraid. It's right about here. Russell 2000 index. 1200 low, 1227, 1227, 1230 ish. Above this level, sellers be very, very afraid. But right now, it be in between these two here, there could be a lot of volatility, a lot of ups and downs. So we would have to watch this and then, you know, kind of continue on see and let the market talk to us, right? So looking at all these indices, we just looked at Dow Jones, S&P, NASDAQ, and Russell. Um, and the Russell, I said that Dow, S&P, Russell, NASDAQ. Looking at all these indices, I have to say that uh, you know it's bearish, obviously in a minor term, it's bearish intermediate term. Um, prime major primary term we're still bullish which I talked about in the last midweek update video uh, just going to like a micro micro term uh, you know looks like you know looks like this is Nasdaq here looks like buyers came in and and we in a close strong so I think 10 EMA right there you know is gonna be a next resistance it's just very very short term right here and then if we get above uh, recent resistance where we pull back last week uh, or on Monday uh, that's where you're gonna see buyers start to get more confidence and start to get up there And then we talked about the major pivot levels. We'll watch that and the next Wednesday We'll go back and revisit that. Let me look at Apple and Tesla real quick. I'll end this video here. I already spent 30 minutes um, Apple, let me get rid of these uh, I recently wrote an, wrote an article looking at a weekly chart Check my blog on that um, and giving you guys more of a long term perspective. But as far as like, you know, minor term is concerned, it's very, very similar to what's happening. So 20 MA is acting as a resistance there right now. And again, all resistance new support, micro term, right? So that has been support. Now is acting as a resistance. What's happening is we pull back and then we got back up today here. So if we get up, if we get back up above 1306, if we stay above 1470 and stay well above that and close above that, I think the next support will be 19, uh, probably 117 there. We do have a gap right on this. Here, we're gonna do a, here, let me zoom this in. You can see we have, okay, let me put a box in there. Ah, uh, that gap was filled. Looks like there's a little bit of, still hasn't been filled there, so again, Old resistance new support. We threw a little bit of shooting star. We pull back. We got back up here. So I think if you're a buyer here, if you're 
a bull, what you want to see is I think at least getting up above above that gap. So 115.28. If we can do that, probably going to find some momentum back up to about 120. Above 120, sellers be very, very afraid because above 120, that's what I would call nullification process of this topping pattern there though that looks very very ugly really really awkward i've never seen app rolling over with that kind of pattern there but again i think it's just because with the market market was shaking out and most people are very very nervous <coughs> just straight up panic but anyway so above 120 i think we're gonna see a lot of buyers coming in short and obviously watch out for fake outs and head head fakes and all that stuff so we still got a lot of work to do um so we need to first things first 113 warm 14 uh, and then 115, and then uh, 117, and then 120. Those are the resistance level there. Um, we probably gonna find some resistance of 113.65 in an intraday tomorrow. So watch that level. What you wanna see is if you are a buyer, you wanna see this thing closing well above 115. If we can do that, we can get up to 119. But if we start to fall back here, it's not a good level to fall. If we fall below 106, then uh, some of those levels, you can put some Fibonacci there, so then things can get hectic there. So we were, we're still, fun. we're getting some micro term momentum here from the buyers, but there are a lot of sellers up here, and there are a lot of there's people are still very panicky, and and so there's any kind of a you know any kind of a, a you know sell off action that could kind of give you that domino effect in the minor term in a micro term where people because there's gonna, there's a lot of anxious people out there right that's all they do they have just one click on the mouse they have the sell button ready and as soon as they see some weird and boom they're gonna sell it. and that's why these all this panic stuff happens so let's see let's see if we can continue higher here I, i'm looking at i'm looking at, I'm, I'm looking to see i'm looking to see if we can close above 115 next several days if we can't do that then we want to make sure we are holding 107 if you're a buy if you're a seller here you want to make sure this thing gets below this level and then after that get below 94. but again without mark and participating on that sell off i don't think apple gonna have any more sell off there again i did my long-term analysis on my article on my blog i checked that out uh, looking at a weekly term there i looked at some fibonacci and a major term uh pivot uh tesla um you know i'm tesla's tesla looking pretty similar to apple as far as you know last last few weeks is concerned but that uh, we're still in a downtrend here, respecting the resistance quite a bit uh this gap was filled on this day which is a good thing so i'm still i'm i can't, i don't want to go long at this point until if we can get above 266 if we can get above 266 i want to go long on tesla there so right now if you're a buyer on tesla you want it to at least come up here and fill this gap at least even maybe 270 and then maybe do a little pullback and then get up right and then maybe form something like this but that will be in a perfect world doesn't mean that it's gonna happen you could still come down do shenanigan like this and get up i mean there are a lot of different ways that it could play out but again i would i i don't i don't feel comfortable going long here i really like to see this thing getting above 267 at least fill this gap right here we still have this gap that hasn't been filled and so uh um, that's not maybe not be a true gap since that was wick there but and we're right on the 50 ma so i mean at least minimum at 260 i want to see it getting up to 260 and then and then kind of pulling back and then do something like that tesla is known to be very very hyped once it get hyped up it could just go straight up like that's kind of like tesla can do that sometimes you know it just it goes up we get a little pull, and then it just keep going like that and here as well we get little pullbacks in between like with the short-term pullback this one was a little bit more bigger term pullback and then we did that and i remember i was able to uh, ride that at that point uh went long there so it, it tesla you have to be pretty quick uh on your entry but again i still don't i still like it to be above 266 or so if we can do that then possibly uh you know you can find some momentum there and tesla is obviously we're just i mean this thing came here so far and then we've just been just grinding here so i mean we could even channel here not sure so we could even channel here for a while and if that's the case uh you know things can get hectic to uh you know get into more well, longer term trade though i still think that tesla could if the market is healthy i mean some of those levels can be 
can be met but it's too early to say so well that's all i got uh for tonight i hope you guys are uh find these videos um interesting and uh helpful there um but uh, let's see what happens next few days and um if i see anything i'll post an article maybe tweet some things out and we'll go from there we'll have a great night if you have any, any comments or anything to say to me uh feel free to use comment section below uh, the web or uh, on my blog uh, to ask any questions uh, you can email me if you like and follow me at 2k kim as well so have a great night uh, enjoy your night it's wednesday um maybe i'll go for a run before dinner talk to you guys later